Hey guys, I'm Mario Louie and welcome to my latest video. So as you can tell by the title, we're going with another sort of review of the year kind of video and this time I'm talking about the best games of 2014. So to start off with, I'm going to be talking about my pick for game of the year, which is Alien Isolation. Now this game, um, I pre-ordered it because I'd seen a lot of like, um, you know, like stuff about it, like videos and reviews and a lot of people getting excited about this game. And when I first played it, I was blown away. I didn't expect it to be as good as it actually was. Like to this day, I haven't actually finished it because it's just so damn hard. Like I'm, I'm probably quite near the end of the game. Like I thought, or already thought I'd completed it at one point, but it, they just took the, the story, just carried on, and I thought, oh, this is, this is not bad. Um, I just, it's just so difficult. I'm, I'll probably try and play it again and try and, you know, get past that bit, but. It's just so difficult at this bit I'm on. It's just like, obviously Alien Isolation being Alien as in Ridley Scott's Alien. Um, basically, basically a prequel. It's... Not a prequel. A sequel set before Aliens, but in between the two. And you're um, the main... Obviously, you're in the main uh, Alien franchise. You're Ripley. And in this game, you are her daughter. So you kind of... See some similarities there, which I do like because I'm a huge fan of the Alien movies. But I thought this game has really captured the intensity and the suspense that the actual Alien film brings. Because in that film, there's quite a slow build-up, and in the game, um, in the first couple of hours, like not much really happens. But then the first time you see the Alien, you're like, oh my god! You like literally shit yourself. It's so like. My guy, it feels so like when you're actually playing the game, you feel like you're in the game. Like, and not not a lot, not a lot of games can be as immersive as that. Next, we have South Park: The Stick of Truth, which is an RPG based on the television series South Park, and it's just really hilarious. And it's quite, it's it's like you're playing an episode of South Park. It really does feel like that. And it's just a great. Like when I first saw it, I thought, our oh, South Park game." Was probably not going to be good because most games that are based on TV shows are normally like pretty bad like obviously there's been a hell of a lot of Simpsons games and the only ones that was really good is Hit and Run and Simpsons, the Simpsons, the actual Simpsons game wasn't that bad but when I saw South Park 4 uh, I didn't really expect much of it but PewDiePie started playing it um, on YouTube and I've, I'm subscribed to him and I started watching it and it's just hilarious. I can't get over how funny it actually is, and PewDiePie obviously makes it even funnier. But the actual story and the actual gameplay is just hilarious. It's full, filled with like little fun, little Easter eggs and side quests and that sort of thing to pay homage to, well, South Park and. Yeah, it's a really funny game. A game that I don't think is one of the best games of 2014 is definitely Destiny. I think it's highly overrated. I've played a bit of it and it is it is a decent game. Like it's playable, but I just don't think it's great. Especially when you I think you only get like two planets or something in the actual game, and then the rest is like DLC, which they're going to bring out later. And it's just like. Why not just give me the full game now rather than making me buy like 50 billion add-on packs? Like, seriously? But a, a game that definitely is one of the best games of this year, Octodad Dadly is Catch. Now this game, it may sound silly, you're an octopus disguised as a human and everyone else thinks he's a human even though you can clearly see he's an octopus, it's still hilarious and it's just the funnest game like it's quite difficult to get used to at first because of the controls obviously I mean the um, like the arm tentacles are separate from the legs so you have to control them separately so like if you want to walk you have to switch the legs and use them and it's really clunky controls and it's really difficult to get used to but once you get the hang of it it's a really really fun game a game that a lot of people think probably should be game of the year Goat Simulator this game Came as a bit of a shock to people, like people saw the trailer and they put hard oh, goat simulator. What is that? And then you play it, it's just, oh it's so funny. And it's just got everything out of game, like every glitch that you could possibly think of in a game and everything that could go wrong. They've intentionally put it in the game. I think it's brilliant. For a group of I'm guessing they crowdsourced it and I'm guessing it's well it's an indie game and it's just absolutely 
genius for what they've done. I mean, there's so many like DLC, well not DLC, but there's so many like mods and you know extra Easter eggs and little bits, and it's just it's such a fun game to play. I've played about 20 minutes of it, and it's just the funniest game I've ever played. It's just so silly. It doesn't try and take itself seriously at all, and I think a lot more games need to kind of move away from like the serious thing. And obviously, it's good to have serious games, but you do need a bit of humour in there. And the final game that I think is one of the best games of 2014 was The Walking Dead Season 2, as in the Telltale Walking Dead. Um, I haven't actually played this for myself, but I've watched PewDiePie play like the whole season, and it just looks like a brilliant game, and I mean, I'm a, great, a huge fan of the TV series Walking Dead and I've read a bit of the comics and I absolutely love everything about Walking Dead. But this game just captures everything and just puts it into one immersive experience for the, for the player, really. And I don't know, it's just it, the story gets to you. Like when the, the some of the characters die, obviously I'm not going to spoil it, but when some of the characters die, you actually feel a bit sad about it. and. Especially near the end, there's a lot, and you know, it just, it, just it, it really makes you, it really has an impact on you, and not a lot of games do that. I mean, I mentioned Uncharted has that sort of same effect, but Walking Dead just takes it a lot further, and I like the way you can make your own sort of decisions, like, you have um, choices that you can make, like, can you save certain people or save all the people or you choose to do something in a certain way and there's a consequence to that and then at the end there's different endings at the end based on the decisions you make in each episode throughout the season but yeah guys i hope you have enjoyed this video leave a like in the description well leave a like in the description what leave a like leave a comment down below what you think are the best games of 2014 and what you or if you think I've missed any games, or if you disagree about Destiny, or any of the games I've put on this list, then just let me know. Subscribe if you enjoy my content. Take care, guys.